Let's talk about React.js in this video. So create React app. If you have used React ever, you should know this is, or this was, I would rather say, was one of the first tools to just kickstart and create a React application using Webpack, using set of default configurations, and you will just run it inside your CLI and you will have a basic React project. Well, that is getting deprecated today for new apps and encouraging existing apps to migrate to a framework, right? And we are also providing docs for when a framework isn't a good fit for you, or you prefer to start by building a framework. So React has deprecated this way of creating apps with Create React App starting today. And if you go on their website also, you will see this notice that Create React App is getting deprecated. Of course, this would still work because deprecation doesn't mean that this is removed, but this is what React website or React people are not suggesting to do anymore. So if I try creating a React App from scratch once with this Create React App tool, let me just remove all the existing files and let me just run npx create Create React app and then dot to signify to do this in the same directory, right? So first things first, one of the reasons I feel that Create React app is generally bad is because you can see it's extremely slow, right? So I'm installing this on a playground on CodeDAM and this comes with like a good CPU and RAM, but it still takes a lot of time to set up the initial version. Similarly, if I go ahead and start a React playground using Vite, so this setup internally uses Vite, you will see that it how fast it starts up, right? So we get a container provision and we are installing wheat directly and it's ready. I'm not showing you anything which is like, you know, it's hotly available or something was running already before ahead of time. We just installed packages using bun and we started the react server using wheat and react is ready to go. Over here, you can still see like, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it also failed like because it was trying to do a git commit or something and was not able to do that, right? It failed doing that, but it finally then started and now I have to just write npm start in order to start this. So the whole setup of create react app felt extremely slow and any of the IDE in browser IDE that you see whether that's code dam whether that's any of the other tools you would know that we had far earlier moved on to an implementation that uses wheat instead of create react app or webpack for starting these react servers because it's just extremely slow to do for new projects other than that react teams themselves mentions that there are several limitations of create react app which is for example routing is not available which most of the projects would need at some point unless you're building something extremely specific, you would need routing. So you end up adding like a React router or TAN stack router as a library where every route can have its own path. With React, it also does not come with any specific way of fetching data, right? So you have to write things like in use effect, which now, you know, can fire twice, for example, with React 18 and so on. And it also results in network waterfalls, which is like your whole JavaScript mounts first, and then this use effect runs, and then it will just create another request. And if you want to pass parallelize request, combine them somehow, cache them eventually. So all of that is not available in stock React. Similarly, code splitting is also not available out of the box in Create React app, which is, you know, something you would probably need for a production app. If you're doing different routing, you would probably don't want to ship the whole code at, in one bundle. And there are a lot of problems, right, in general. So you look at all of these things, which the React team has mentioned. So let me be clear about this. So what exactly they are mentioning as a problem is not specifically with Create React app. It's specifically with React in general, because React as a language, as a UI library, it does not come with these constructs, right? If you look at library like framework like Angular, so Angular comes with these things like how you have to perform HTTP requests or you know how the routing would work. React does not come with that. And Create React app was a very simple way to bootstrap or kickstart a React project, right? So that you can compile JSX to normal HTML, you can run it in the browser and so on. So it makes sense. Obviously, there is nothing wrong with Create React app in general. Everything is in a way wrong with React that it does not come with these constructs or presets defines. And that's why we have 10 different ways, right? For routing, you can see like you can either do it in a hacky way like this, or you can use tan stack router now, or you can use react router now, or, you know, Next.js implements it in a completely different way. Or, you know, if you look at Remix, it uses react router. So we have like a lot of these solutions just because the primary library, which is react, does not come with defined way of doing things, right? Which could be a good thing and bad thing, depending on how you are seeing it. But again, what I want to enforce here is that I feel these are primarily problems with React, not with Create React app, because what other frameworks and other tools try to fix is that it, they try to give a direction to React in general, right? So Next.js, for example, solves routing.
thinking out of the box. It solves server-side rendering out of the box. It solves, uh, if you try to go with the Versal stack, they also come with use SWR hook, which is by Versal. So it solves the data fetching out of the box. On the client side, on the server side, it's already available, right? So you can write, get static props and you can make the fetch calls there. All of that works fine. Next.js also solves code splitting out of the box. So all of these things are being solved automatically when you use a framework like Next.js. And that is what they also say that why we recommend frameworks is that although you can do all these pieces yourself in a build tool like Create, React, App, Beat or Parcel, it's hard to do it well, right? Frameworks impose some opinions about structuring your app, all of that. This is why we started recommending frameworks like Next.js, React Router and Expo for new projects. And I mean, even in all of them, I think Next.js stands out the best. You also have Remix, for example. But I don't feel like there are a lot of options out there if you want to start building a full stack app and you don't want to use popular tools like Next.js or Remix or React Router and so on. Expo is something interesting. I have not used Expo a lot, but it has been catching up a lot of interest for me. So I want to explore this tool at some point. I remember it from very early React Native days where it used to be a very locked in thing. I'm excited to try out Expo now. It has been many, many years. I'm talking about like multiple, at least like four to five years back. That is the time when, you know, I came across, I think Expo for the very first time, then it was not so good. But now I feel like I've been hearing about them a lot. I've been looking about people, you know, recommending it a lot of times. I want to give some time maybe this year to explore Expo in depth. But anyway, that's basically it. Moving forward, they do recommend that you start using Next.js or if for anything simple, you can start with Vite also. Ivan Yu, who's also the founder and creator of Vite and Vue, take care in a tweet that he says that I think this is fair that the rest of the blog provides good reasoning why on they believe it started to better to start with frameworks. But he still recommends that you should start with Vite if you are new to React and then add on new things as a plugin. And even in React's official blog, there is a section here that says that we provide several wheat based recommendations. React Router v7 is a wheat based framework. Just like other frameworks, we recommend you can build a single page application with React Router v7. So they do put this notice, but there is a, this interesting thread going on, which you can read to understand more about this. Because for example, if you look at wheat in general, it also comes with these limitations that you don't have a routing strategy out of the box. You don't have a data fetching strategy out of the box, right? Only a framework like Next.js provides these things out of the box. But yeah, I mean, create React app in general, like Ben also mentions here, has a lot of problems inherently. It's slow for, I mean, I don't know why nobody's mentioning that, but create React app is extremely slow compared to like Vite. That itself is like a huge incentive to shift to something better, right? The problem here is that obviously it's extremely popular. Now you might say that Mehul, 160,000 downloads a week is not that much popular, right? We have packages which have millions of weekly downloads. What you have to realize here is that not very, very few people people are mistakenly doing create react app calls in CI, right? Most of the downloads that you see of packages like Express, for example. So if you look at this 37 million downloads a week, I can bet you that a lot of them are coming from CI, continuous integrations on GitHub Actions or here and there. Create react app, even though it's on 160,000 downloads a week, these are new. These are mostly new downloads a week, right? Somebody actually going on their system and writing npx space create react app. So these matter a lot more according to me than these downloads, which are like in millions, because most of these packages are for production use. Create React app you will call when you're starting a new project. So it makes sense that these downloads are coming from people who are starting new projects. So about 150,000 projects created every single week are coming from Create React app, which now is a technology that is deprecated. So that's something that will take time for people to adjust. And hopefully if you're doing that after watching this video, you will use something better like wheat or next year's so that's all for this one i will see you in the next video very soon